Huskies. Hosting the number six Nebraska Cornhuskers. One of the prime games of an entire season. One of those games that can make or break a season. That roar behind us is for the assembled Huskies about to break out of the tunnel and enter their house where today the Big Red comes calling. Let's turn now to Bob Creasy and get his thoughts on this matchup today. There are so many elements to consider. Well, Keith, I think one of the most interesting is the Washington quarterback, Brock Heard. If you haven't seen or heard of him, he is special. A sophomore, he leads the nation in pass efficiency. He's bright. He's a straight-A student in pre-med, but today he goes up against a defense in Nebraska, and its defense is coordinated by Charlie McBride. Charlie's been there 20 years. He's gone against some good quarterbacks in Cordell Stewart and uh, Danny Werfel, and he's always come out on top. It's going to be a tough day for the quarterback. And this is a hostile crowd for any visiting team. Just a little hint of autumn in that postcard as we come into Husky Stadium alongside Lake Washington in Seattle for this game between the Nebraska Cornhuskers led by this man with a remarkable record, Tom Osborne, Mr. Tom, and the Washington Huskies, the home team, which is led by this man, Jim Lambright. Jimmy played for Jim Owens here. He never left. And he has come back to be the head coach. And he is standing, as he said yesterday, full view of a great window of opportunity for himself, for his football team. Washington won the cross. They want the ball. They will receive it. So they want to have the first offensive possession of the day. The Cornhuskers will kick it away. It's a high, deep hanging kick at the three yard line to Jerome Payton. Payton has daylight, and then he is clobbered. I mean, he is busted by Brendan Harrison up about the 34 yard line. The Chile starting lineup now for the Washington Huskies along the front. That's a seasoned group led by center Olin Krutz and guard Benji Olson. The receivers. Payton is the prime man, a Canadian, and very, very good. There's great speed with uh, Coleman as well. The backs, Rashan Sheehy has run hard and often in the first two games. He looks solid, but this will be decided probably by the quarterbacks. And in particular, number seven, Brock Heward, a lanky big fella who can throw at the length of the field on some days, it seems. They will, however, run on the first offensive play of the game, and it's a two-yard pickup up to about the 36-yard line. Grant Wistrom is the man who leads the defense for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, along with Jason Peter, the big tackle. The linebackers and the safeties will try very much to get into Heward's face today, number 44, Foreman in particular. The defensive backs, the corners, Peterson and Ralph Brown, probably headed for a very busy afternoon. Second down and eight for Washington from the 36. The left-hander lets it go down the middle for Mason. He's got it turn at the Nebraska 45-yard line. First down for the Huskies. Warfield covering on the play, but Payton is a handful. As you look at Brock Heward, so far this year, 69%, thrown seven touchdowns and has not thrown an interception this year. In fact, it's been a quite a while since he's thrown an interception. Only one in the last 158 attempts for Brock Heward. Coleman's at the top of the picture. Dessa Shure is in the ball game to the bottom of the picture. Payton gets a breather. Almost jump. This is Sheehy, and Rashawn Sheehy will carry it to the 40-yard line. There are two penalty flags down. Somebody either moved in the dark shirt or somebody was in the neutral zone. It's the latter. It is offside Nebraska. So take the penalty, and that'll give you a first and five. Just getting underway, the Washington Huskies come out with uh, Dalen, number 75, at 320 at tackle. The other tackle is Colts. He's 300. The center is uh, Krutz. He's at 290. 
Benji Olsen weighs in at 310, and the other guard, Brad Hutt, is at 285. And Keith, if this is not the best offensive line in the country, it is in the top five. So Brock Hewitt working behind a very solid line. A lot of movement. Now they're set. Ball goes to Sheehy. Hold on the right side. Gets inside the 35. Down to the 34. That's another first down for Washington as Octavius McFarland makes the tackle for Nebraska. Brad Hunt, who came from the Air Force Academy, came to Washington. Home is Woodenville. Fiery competitor. Very good. Explodes off the ball. There's a look at the defensive line. Uh, Christian Peter, excuse me, Jason Peter, Christian's brother, is in that line. One of the top defensive linemen in the country. It'd be a good matchup to watch all day. Coleman is the man in motion. Ewart back quickly on motion. Misses. Coleman, the intended receiver. There was a Husker in his face, and Hewitt got rid of it a little sooner maybe than he needed to. But Grant Westrom was coming, and when you hear those pounding hooves, you do pay attention. Well, two, two of the best defensive line. We talked about how good the Huskies' offensive line is. Two of the best defensive linemen, Grant Westrom, number 98, and Jason Peter, number 55, are wearing red and white this afternoon. That'll be a great matchup. Second down and 10 for the Huskies from the Nebraska 34. Stewart still got it. Comes to this side. Penalty flag is thrown. Trying to set up a screen. Cameron Cleland, the tight end. A tight end screen. We haven't seen much this year, but there is a flag, so let's see about it. Somebody may have been moving. It was Nebraska moving into the neutral zone again. That's the second time they've been hit offside, so they're trying to anticipate, and they've been caught twice. Wistrom, number 98, the top of your screen, the outside guy, being double-teamed, Colts, number 67, and then Reed, 36, helping out. This was just a quick screen, and they're still very concerned about Grant Wistrom. It'll be second down and five. The ball is on the 34 now. I'm sorry, the ball is on the 29 of Nebraska. And Payton is back in the ball game. He's spotted to the bottom of your picture. Well, they're there again, and Hewitt may have caught him again. There's a flag. I think he got him again. Wistrom, trying to anticipate the snap count, was in the neutral zone. Three times now they've been caught on an offside. This will give the Huskies a first down. Yeah, Keith, I like this. Uh, Brock Hewitt is just a sophomore, but he's got control of the line of scrimmage. Look at him barking out the cadence. And that's Kelsey, 57, who he's got jumping. An offense should control the line of scrimmage. They know the snap count. The defense does not. But it's it's something special that a quarterback has to, to, to rely on and to be able to do is once you get the play called and then you got the read, now... Play around with the defense by trying to pull him off with your snap count. I'm very impressed so far with Brock Hewitt. Coach's son. Yes, he is. This is Shaw, Maurice Shaw, the bigger of the running backs, and he slams his way down to the 20. That's a pickup for four yards. And now let's hear from our colleague, Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, part of home field advantages for the University of Washington is the noise level they generate. Now, keep in mind what loud is. Look at this graphic, the decibel level. And keep in mind also that when the Huskies took the field this afternoon, the home team generated a, a decibel level of 119. When Nebraska's offense is on the field, it's going to be a real problem, Keith. Kind of like that Aeroflot flight that almost landed in somebody's backyard <laughs> in Jury the other day. Uh -huh. That must have been loud. That got your attention. Oh, my. You're getting pressure. Steps away. Throws the ball to Sheehy. Sheehy is at the 20. Still going to the 16. Octavius McFarlane was finally able to wrap him down around the 16-yard line. He's very quick, and he's a good receiver. Well, Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator calling the plays in for Hewitt, is using a couple of screen plays on this first drive. Two out of the first six or seven plays have been screens, the reason being to try and slow down, slow down the rush of the uh, Cornhuskers. It is now third and two. Go to Sheehy, for the first down, and he's not going to get it. Didn't 
get that server, did they? No, sir. Jay Foreman, that middle oh, linebacker, oh. number 44, stepped up. And they're well short. They're short by two yards. Owen Kruitz, number 67, is in the center of that line. Benji Olsen. But those two guys, all Americans, are not moving the Husker line. And it's fourth down and short. First critical play of the game, Keith. And they're going. They disdained the field goal here early in the ball game. They're going for the possession. Long count. Husker set in there. Now timeout. Yeah. Tried to pull him off. He had got him to jump two or three times on this drive. It was a good thought to think you might be able to get him again, but no doing. That tells you something about Nebraska. They Justin. kept their composure. Yeah. He did something. Randy Jones is on now for a field goal try. He's two out of five. He's hit from 18 and 29. He's missed from 22, 32, 46. This one he missed it again from 33 yards. So he's two of six. Nebraska holds Washington away from the scoreboard when it looked like the Huskies might stick it in the end well, zone. Suddenly, a, they stiffen. Yeah, if there's been an Achilles heel for this team, Keith, the Huskies, it's been their kicking. Last year, it was abominable, both the place kicking and the punting. This year, the punting is better. The place kicking is still very questionable. So from the 20, here comes Nebraska now. Scott Frost will set him up. They go double wide to the bottom of the picture. And Frost hands the ball off to Amon Green. And he's got five yards out for the 25-yard line. The Chili starting lineup for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They are led along the front by Aaron Taylor, who was an All-American at center. He's now at left guard. The receivers, the tight end, is a strength position for Nebraska. All four of them good ones. The backs with the defense crowds and tries to stop the run a Husker fullback named Makovica may suddenly pop through there he's big and strong and he can run it but right now it's Amon Green showing the Washington Huskies how the Nebraska Cornhuskers do it on the ground the defense for Washington led by Jason Chorak two young people in the middle the big guys but they're learning every week and Chris Campbell has become almost a star he's on his way those two backers, uh, Towns and Jensen uh, and Harrison, they can all run. In the secondary, the tough guy is Tony Parrish. And now the Nebraska Cornhuskers are moving the football on the ground and uh, are saying to the Washington defense, come on, let's see what you got. Yeah, and the, one of the things they've got is that Makovica up the middle, Keith. Expect to see him a lot today. Randy Hart, the defensive coordinator for Washington, was concerned about this first drive. He says it's critical that we stop him this first drive. He says we have not been able to, to, uh, to show our team the speed that Nebraska has in practice. On second and six, this is Makovica, the fullback. And suddenly there he is, and it's a first down on the Washington side of the field at the 46-yard line. Now a moment with John Saunders. Six-yard line of Washington. Nebraska ball. Not a pass so far. Frost getting heat. Gets his first pass of the day in the air. There's a penalty flag down right around midfield. The pass was incomplete. The man chasing him was Jason Shorak. Washington was in a blitz situation and just came across the line of scrimmage a little too quickly. The referee is Gordon Reese. Nebraska's strength, Keith, as you well know, is their 
running game. They are second in the nation rushing the ball. They're averaging 418 yards per game. Washington defensively, they're the best at stopping the run. Two, four, six people up on the line right now for Washington. Hand it off to Green. Green is grabbed by Burton as he comes through the middle, but he's still picking up big yardage, and you can move the chains again. It's first down Nebraska at the Washington 34. And they're getting all of their yardage right up the middle, Keith. This is a defense that likes to run. This defense of Washington can run right to left, but the question is right up the middle. Well, they're knocking uh, Wiggs and uh, Issa out of the way. Yeah, and, and that's, what, uh, that's what we were told yesterday, that you need two big defensive tackles in there and they're not doing the job right now. The Nebraska offensive line is winning that battle. For a little bit to the outside, and this will be touchdown for Scott Frost. Nebraska gets the lead. Frost goes 34 yards. The 10,000 or so Cornhusker faithful who made the trip out to Seattle stand and yell. Listen, and if you remember some of the booing <laughs> last week at the Memorial Stadium in Lincoln came out of the student section, and it not only upset Scott Frost, it upset his coach, Tom Osborne, considerably. The extra point prize is good. Chris Brown. Six plays, 80 yards. I haven't seen this on play. The I haven't seen this one, Keith. It was a fake up the middle. Scott Frost around the end, running right toward the Nebraska fans. And so Nebraska, who's been in a lot of big games, more than any of the Huskers who are on the field right now, and the Huskers have taken the lead. The kick skittering down, and he's finally fielded up the final. Jarzinka. And Joe Jarzinka is taken down short of the 20, leveled at the 17-yard line by Octavius McFarland. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about chain. By Home Depot, America's home improvement coach. By National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. And by Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. the Husky offense can start its climb uphill. Seven to nothing, Nebraska in the first quarter. Seven eighteen to play. Brock Heward with nobody behind him stands up and throws quickly. And the ball is batted down and there's a penalty flag. Holding Washington. Oh, the Huskies now making mistakes. They're backing up, and Nebraska is taking control of the momentum of the ball game early on. Well, Keith, you mentioned momentum, and the Huskies had it when they marched down the field. They looked uh, good on that drive. Then when they missed the field goal and gave the ball over to Nebraska, Nebraska went down and scored. That's like a 10-point swing. Washington thought they were going to be up by three. They're down by seven. And the ball comes back to the seven yard line where it will be first down. And that's going to be about right at 20 yards. First and 20. That's Coleman in motion. Heward to Sheehy. Oh, over the left side, but caught as he goes through the hole by Grant Wistrom. Wistrom reached back and grabbed the limb as it came by. It turned out to belong to the ball carrier. <laughs> There's a leg. Hmm, I'll take a bite out of it and see who yelps. Grab that while he's going through. The advance was just beyond the 11. Second down. But there's a flag, and you may have another hold. Yep, on Washington. 
The Huskies are losing control of this first quarter quickly. Refuse the penalty, obviously, takes the loss. It's inside the four-yard line, where it is now third down and 23. I think the holding is over here on Wester. Go ahead and run it. Watch as the two uh, offensive linemen are going to turn out. 75 is Dale, and the sack comes from the right. The hold is on the left. The problem was there was no place for Hewer to step up. You got holes in that offensive line everywhere. And Nebraska right now is threatening to get a stranglehold on this first quarter of play. Hear it out of the end zone. Pass is batted away. It's an incomplete forward pass. And there's another series of penalty flags along the area of the line of scrimmage. So let's see about that. Jason Peter, number 55, was the man that came up the middle and got the hit on Brock Hewitt. He did. This game was going to be won or lost in the trenches, and right now the trenches are owned by the uh, University of Nebraska. No question about it. Peter and uh, Wistrom are dominating. The ball was thrown. Wistrom right there. And Peter, 55 batted away and the long discussion makes me wonder if they're talking safety. There's another penalty on Washington. If that's the case, why wouldn't it be a safety? No, they ruled it a pass, but they ruled it that it hit an offensive line. <laughs> okay. Huskies will get a chance to punt it out of the end zone. Sean O'Loughlin comes in to uh, do the punting. Oh, the center has to snap the ball on target. He has no room to step back. Ryan Pittman is the snap man. It's the first season for him snapping the ball. The snap is good. The kick is away. And it's a good one, but it's hooked out of bounds. Yeah. If great, he keeps that thing in great. the field of play, though, it might still be rolling. Yeah. It's all the way down from the Nebraska 44-yard line. That's a 54-yard punt. Great kick. They had a return set up, Keith. It would have, if it would have been in the, the field of play, there might have been a big return. It's seven to nothing, Nebraska. The Cornhuskers own the football. First down at their own 44. 5.56 to play in the first quarter. That man right there, along with Jason Peter, have dominated this ball game. The defensive line and the offensive line for Nebraska. Scott Cross gives to Green. Big hole as he comes whistling up the middle. Go back to the play in the end zone. The question of whether or not it's a forward pass or a fumble. Take a look at this. He's going to pump right there. I think the ball comes loose. The ball fell out of his hand or slipped out of his hand before it comes forward. There's the fake. There, he dropped the ball. It came out of his hand. Now, the ruling would, it's, it's a live ball. Whoever fell on it, the official, Gordon Reese, said it was an incomplete pass. Big break for the Huskies. Second down and two. Go to Makovic at the fullback. Got a first down. Amon Green, I'm sorry, it, instead of Makovic. And uh, I'm trying to get everything done here. Let me have that. Live at 9 Eastern time here on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, Pittsburgh at Jacksonville. You see uh, number 10 for Pittsburgh, Cardell Stewart. Well, he's going to try to unwrap things and let it rip for the Steelers. Time Cop goes back in time to track the world's first serial killer, Jack the Ripper, the series premiere of Time Cop Monday. Check local listings for the times in your area. No word yet on whether or not Mark Brunel, the former Husky, will be able to play for the Jacksonville yeah. Jaguars. He's the one that suffered that knee injury in the uh, preseason. He was a special player, Keith. We did some games out here uh, with uh, right here at this field. I hope he gets back playing real soon. All right, it's a third down and uh, a half a 
yard, maybe not even that much for Nebraska. And Green is the deep back, but Cross on the quarterback sneak will pick up the first down. He just laid right in behind his center, Eskew, Taylor, and Zadiska, and he moved the pile. Ball is on the Washington side of the field at the 45. Along the front, Nebraska, Pollock is 305, Taylor uh, 305, 280 for Heskew, 290 for Zadiska, and 305 for Anderson. They're they, big enough. They've always been known, Nebraska, for good offensive line keys, and this one is one of the better ones also. Yeah. This time, the Huskies handle the run attempt. Tuki Wig jumps right on the back of Armand Green and takes him down at the line of scrimmage. Here again, New York, John Saunders. He's Arkansas, the last team to knock off Alabama in Tuscaloosa, and they're at it again. This is a Burger King update. Clint Stoner to Anthony Eubanks, 29 yards with under two minutes left in the game, and Arkansas goes on to the one-point victory. Florida and Tennessee at it. Doug Johnson has a touchdown pass in this one. The Gators up 7-0. Keith. Second down and 10. Nebraska at the Washington 45. Shot down the line. Pitches the ball back to Green. Green down the sidelines and knocked out at the 39-yard line by Lester Towns. Number 17, a linebacker for Washington. Washington had a blitz coming up the middle. Scott Frost did a nice job. The quick pitch to the, the tailback. Take a look at it right here. Jensen is 40. The pitch gets around him. And if, if Green gets by one man, it was open the rest of the way. So it is third and a long four for Nebraska. And the crowd trying to help the Husky defense. Out of the shotgun. Cross pass. Thrown to the sideline. Right on the marker to Lance Brown. Depends on the spot. Well, he's close enough. It'll be a fourth down try, you can be sure. It's four down territory inside the 40 for this team. Talking to Tom yesterday out here on the field, uh, he calls all the plays. I said, Tom, I said, you know, if you head coach calls all the plays, you've got to watch a lot of film to know what plays to call when. He says, you know, that's what I enjoy most about coaching is calling the plays. He was an ex-quarterback. He loves calling the plays. He watches a lot of tape at night. Fourth and a half a yard. And they've got the first down. They just simply hunkered down and moved the pile. And it's first down, Nebraska at the Washington 34-yard line. On the field, Lynn Swan. A comment on the noise. Well, Kate, we told you what Washington's home advantage was with the noise. Let me tell you what Nebraska does to counter that. Number one, they're not going to call as many audibles. When they do, they have some hand signals. But Ron Brown said one of the things they do is won't be as selective. Each play in the option is designed for a touchdown. When they come up, they'll more than likely to stick with what they have instead of going for the perfect play all the time, Keith. Here's your option to Armand Green. And they finally get him out of bounds after about eight yards. Tony Parrish, number seven, got enough of him to push him out. So Nebraska right now in this first quarter with 3.18 to go are grinding up the Huskies. One of the other things that Nebraska has done, Keith, for the noise is the uh, offensive linemen have earplugs. They block out a lot of the crowd noise, but they can still hear the quarterback. It's one of the things that the offensive line does to help hear the signal better. That's what wives wear. Handle Husky <laughs> snoring, right? <laughs> yeah. Scott Frost into the hole behind the fullback and then the eye back, and he doesn't find much room as Marcus Harrison steps in to get him. Harrison is number 27. Scott Frost is a big guy. I mean, there's nothing easy about this fellow. He stands in at uh, 6'3 and 220 and uh, is really basically a decathlete. I mean, he could do a lot of things. You're exactly right. His mother was in the Olympics, uh, Keith, as you well know. 
Uh, Scott Frost is an athlete. He is not the best passer in the world, and he's not the best runner, but he runs this option style for uh, Tom Osborne very well. He's had some good plays already here today. Penalty flag as Green goes hurtling over the left side and gets what appears to be a Buckhalter. Not Green, Buckhalter goes over the left side. That gives you some idea of the confidence they have in some of the people they bring to the campus. This is a true freshman, and on a third down and one critical play, they give it to him, and now we'll wait for the penalty. Before the snap, false start offense. Five yards from the previous spot. So Buckhalter's effort is... Uh, is wasted for the moment as they're penalized for illegal motion. Time remaining first quarter, 208. Seven to nothing, Nebraska lead. It'll be third and a full five now. Cross keeps it. Takes off. He's gone again. Touchdown. last week by some of the student section that's what we believe and we were told and I agree with that but today it's uh, it's the Scott Frost show quarterback draw the offensive lineman is blocking he avoids Suki Wiggs number 67 that's just a great athletic move there the extra point by Chris Brown is good so Scott Frost runs 30 yards for a touchdown. He's carried five times for 68 yards, and he scored twice in the first quarter. Scott, o Tom Osborne is 0-2 uh, against Washington, Keith, but Scott Frost has beaten him one time when he was at Stanford a few years ago. He was uh, playing defensive back, went to quarterback, and went in and helped Stanford beat the University of Washington. Here's 20. Well, Keith, you know, one of the reasons why Scott Frost is having such a hard time and may have been booed is that he is constantly compared to the guy he took over for, Tommy Frazier. When Tommy Frazier was at Nebraska, they won 25 straight, and they won two national championships. And Frost came in the second game of the season last year, and they lose in an upset to Arizona State University. But what this young man has done is he's come in much more mature this year. I talked to his coach, Turner Gill. He says his maturity is phenomenal. The one thing he's improved in most is his ability to run the ball and his confidence when he runs the ball. He makes a decision, and now he sticks with it, Keith. Anybody question the maturity of those doing the booing? Good point. The kickoff to the 10-yard line. Charles Vincott. He's a little guy. And he's tough. And he's out to the 42-yard line. Tony Ortiz made the tackle. Jarzinka has his own rooting section here. He came out of Gig Harbor, walked on at 5'8 uh, and 165 pounds, and he wears the shoulder-length blonde curls, and he's got to be tough to have a hairdo like that. <laughs> And he's still a walk-on, Keith. He still hasn't got a scholarship, and he's, I think he's the third uh, wide receiver and one of the best punt returners on the team. They love him around here. Here's the handoff to the running back, Sheehy. Now the Husky offensive front does something, and they start knocking some corn Huskers out of the way, and they pick up the first down at the Nebraska 46-yard line. ABC's College Football is online live with all of the action from today's games. Get scores, stats, highlights, all America Online. Keyword, ABC Sports. From the 46, first down. Minute and 15 to go in the first quarter. Keyword trying to get some order back in things. Quick toss over to Sheehy, gets some blocking on the screen, penalty flag. As Sheehy gets down to about the 38-yard line, Mike Brown making the tackle for Nebraska. You might have a holding call here. Hewitt is a little bit shooken up, uh, Keith. Wistrom 98 destroying Coates out of the way. 
Wistrom, I think, may have sprained one of his, I mean, uh, Hewitt may have sprained one of his ankles on this play. Another screen pass. He's going to come back on a hold. There's a look at uh, Brock Hewitt. Trying to walk it off. Because uh, Wistrom fell on his ankles as he knocked him down. And Keith, if they have a weakness on this Washington team, it's the depth of quarterback. Tui Asasopo, number 11, is a true freshman. Shane Fortney, yeah. Shane Fortney was the starting quarterback last year. Brock Heward came in and replaced him, and Fortney left school this year. So they're thin, backup quarterback. First and 19, and Jason Harris is in the ball game at running back, steps up into the slot now, and Heward back. Let's it go down the sideline. It is incomplete, intended for Jerome Parthen. He had double coverage on the sideline. He was not. No, he's not. Sound. Yeah, he's not sure about it. He's banged up. Yeah. Take another look. A couple plays back. It's the left ankle. It's hard to tell there. He grabs the left ankle immediately. Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, likes to pressure, put pressure on these quarterbacks. 14 to nothing, Nebraska, second down and 19. For Washington, here it's set. That's it go. It is deep. Carson uh, running under it. No chance to get to it. And he's, he's still struggling. Uh, he's, a, he's, he's a little bit uh, uh, not himself right now, Keith. And I tell you, one of the guy reasons is Grant Wistrom. Wistrom is having his way with that offensive line. When you get nicked a little bit, you don't know if you're moving right, you don't throw the ball as well. Grant Wistrom is one of the guys that have just been giving him fits all day. 98, runs around coach. He didn't get there that time, but he saw him out of the corner of his eyes. Heward back, protection again, ball thrown underneath. That will not be a first down. It's at midfield to Jarzinka. He's shaken up after the hit, and guess who's there again yeah. to torment Heward? Number 98, Wistrom. In the opening, I talked about the defensive coordinator, Charlie McBride. What he likes to do to Cordell Stewart a couple of years ago at Colorado, and what he did to Danny Werfel in that championship game against Florida was harass him, confusion, pressure him, and knock him down. He's not trying to hurt anybody. He just wants to get there and knock him down. And that's what they're doing here this afternoon. And time runs out in the first quarter. It's been all Nebraska, and they're worried now about the left ankle of Brock Hewitt, the Washington quarterback.
college football on ABC Sports. We go to the second quarter of play. Nebraska 14, Washington nothing. Huskies on fourth down will punt it away. Sean O'Loughlin kicking to Lance Brown. His first punt was a 54-yarder out of the end zone. He'll try to kill this one deep. Brown comes over for a fair catch ball at the 15-yard line. And there, Nebraska will take over. While we were away, they were checking on the ankle of Brock Hewitt. You know, Keith, nobody likes to get hurt. You know, that's... Yep. But you, you want to go back out and play. You want to stay, keep playing. This will do a... If, if it's just a sprained ankle and there's nothing wrong, well, that's, that's this good. will give him some reassurances when he goes back out there. And if not, the true freshman, Chuyasa Sopo, will get the call. Nebraska to the attack, handed off to Makovic of the fullback. He's a powerhouse. He picked up about eight yards on that carry. Joel is the second of the Makovica brothers to play fullback at Nebraska. He weighs 235 pounds, and he does not surrender easily. And both of those Makovica brothers, Keith, walked on. And uh, both of them didn't play 11-man football in high school. They played eight-man football. It's interesting that not many of the uh, fullbacks at Nebraska ever get a scholarship. They always walk on and then earn the scholarship. This is Green slanting over the left side. Campbell is on the bottom along with Chorek to stop him. And you'll be looking at third down at about two. Anything new on Hewitt, 20? Well, they're calling it a mild ankle sprain, Keith, to that left ankle. They took the tape off. He's trying to walk on the barefoot. He was demonstrating to the trainer how it was falling on from the outside, so it turned outwardly on that ankle. They're they're trying trying to the first down try here, and it's fumbled. And out of bounds. Nebraska keeps the ball. So the Huskers get a break there. Nice play by Lance Brown to knock that ball out of bounds before the Huskies could get to it. It'll be first down for the Cornhuskers just short of the 30-yard line. Well, the option has been working for Nebraska. It's been working up the middle with Makovica, and it's been working for Scott Frost, who has two long touchdown runs. Green has 51 yards on his 10 carries so far. He and Frost have been the big gun. Got back. Sets up to throw it for the sideline. Has a man there. The pass is incomplete. Sheldon Jackson, who caught a key pass for a touchdown against uh, Central Florida, is shaken up on the play. He took a solid shot. And he's late getting up. Here's a look at some numbers after the first quarter. 136 total yards for Nebraska. Washington with only two first downs. Retaping Hewitt. Incidentally, the head trainer, Donald Cena, he is a Nebraska graduate, has a master's degree. Mm -hmm. A lot of connection between these two schools over the years. Going back to uh, Tippy Dye, when Tippy left here, uh, Seattle as the basketball coach at Washington, went to Lincoln as the athletic director. And Bob Devaney succeeded Tippy as the AD and hired Tom Osborne to replace him. Keith, you never know how a player is going to react to an injury, a little nick. Everybody likes to be 100% when they're playing. And Brock Hewitt is young, and he, like you mentioned earlier, he is the son of a coach, a high school coach. His father, very successful, successful. So we'll have to wait and see how he reacts to being nicked a little bit with an ankle. On second down and 10, it's Green. Amon Green, 6 feet, 215 pounds, a junior out of Omaha, and Nigel Burton brings him down. Burton came to the Huskies from the University of Pacific. <laughs> Pacific dropped football. Yeah, interesting story there. He, uh, he dropped football, and he was looking around trying to get to Stanford, and he put together a tape of when, when Pacific played Nebraska. They beat him 49-7, and, and Burton had a great day. 
So he sent the highlights of that game against Nebraska to Washington. Ball is thrown inside, and he is stopped short of the first down. Kevin Wiggins, wingback, making the catch, but hit instantly, and Nebraska now has the punt. And that's sort of new in the ball game. Well, the first quarter has been all Nebraska, no question about it. Jeremiah Farms is the man that had that last big hit. Jesse Cush comes in to punt now, his first of this game. Good one. High snap. Little pressure. Gets it out. High hanging. And they're going to let it bounce around. And oh my goodness, it takes the point. Husker roll. And rolls dead down at the 12 yard line. So Cush, 23rd birthday today, has a 51 yard punt. No return. 14 nothing. Nebraska. Marcus Tuiasasopo, number 11, a true freshman, is in the ball game. 6'1", 200 pounds. He's from Woodenville. He's the son of Manu Tuiasasopo, who played at UCLA and tormented the Huskies. Now his son is the backup quarterback. And it's Maurice Shaw, number 32, in the ball game, at running back a sophomore out of Sacramento. Tough spot for Tuiasa Soko to have to come in. They're still working on Brock Heward's left leg. Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator, we was asking this yesterday, should something happen? That does not look good there. That does not look good. Looks like he is out. Took off his shoulder pad. This does not look good at all. Linehan was saying yesterday, he says, you know, they move the pocket, get him outside. You've got to be very careful down here. A true freshman in the ball game, backed up against a very aggressive defense. Second down and nine. The pass is in the air. A lot of air under it could be picked off. It is not. They look back into the bright sun and can't find it. As intended for Fred Coleman. It'll be third down and nine. There's a look at the play. A few, uh, few plays ago when uh, Heward was injured, Wistrom fell on his ankle. That changes the complexion of this game very largely, Keith. I'll tell you, this is a, a tough spot for a true freshman to come in. Third and nine. Trips at the top of the picture. He's looking that way and lets it go. He's got Parsons. He's got the ball. First down at the Nebraska 47-yard line. The kick to a perfect pass. Is that a big play or what? I mean, that just boosted the confidence of every member of that offensive and defensive team for the Huskies. I'm sure Nebraska defensively thought that they had him stopped. They wanted to get Heward out of the ball game if they could. They did, and now the freshman beats him deep. 41 yards on the play. First down, Washington. Cornhusker, 47. off to show. Nothing doing. Wistrom and Kelsey. Doors don't squeak when old Grant walks through them. They <laughs> rattle. <laughs> oh, I tell you, he's something. He has just dominated his side of the line. Number 98. Second and ten. Lead in motion. Tuiasa Sopo. Going nowhere. Tried to turn it back inside and never had a chance to get cranked up. Because Kelsey was right there to stop him for a loss of a yard. And here's Swanee on the condition of Brock Heward. What I'm hearing or what they're telling me on the sideline, Keith, is they're going to have the ankle, ice it down for the series. Keep the ice down. Then after this series, take off the ice, tape them up again, and try and put them back in the ball game. He said the problem with the ankle is he cannot push off on it at this time, Keith. That doesn't look good, Keith, when you take your shoulder pads off, though. And you know that, too, Lenny. Third down and ten. That pass in 
intended for Coleman. He's lucky to get that one back because he threw into double coverage. And so they will have to punt it away. So the youngster comes up with one big play. Gets yeah. him out of the yeah. hole. And he now, didn't hurt him. No, no he, he didn't, didn't hurt, hurt him. him. Didn't no. hurt him. Got him out of a hole. You're right. O'Loughlin in for his third punt, 54 and 35. He'd like a high hanger here and keep Nebraska as far down on that end of the field as he can. 9.44 to play in the first half, 14 to nothing. The Cornhuskers lead the Huskies. Oh, that's not very good. The Washington kicking game is not very good. That's a cold, dead shank right. Big break for Nebraska. Fourteen to nothing, Nebraska lead with 9.37 to go in the first half. The sun and shadow now, just about half and half on the floor of Husky Stadium. Jim Lambright watching his Husky struggle, and his quarterback, Brock Hewitt, is on the sideline with a sprained ankle. A two-yard punt by O'Loughlin gives the Cornhuskers the ball at their own 45-yard line. So special teams have failed so far for Washington. That's a good defensive play. Burton, number eight, trailing it. They get Amon Green to bring him down. An ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the Pontiac Sunfire. Finally, a real set of wheels you can really afford. By Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. By Miller Lite, who reminds you that anything can happen at Miller time. And Smith Barney, a member of the Travelers Group. Smith Barney, they make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. Second down and nine for Nebraska. Pitch it out. Goes to Brown. Lance Brown cutting back inside and stopped just short of midfield at the 49-yard line. Oh, they'll be looking at third and six. <laughs> Some new formations by Tom Osborne. That time they had Carpenter, the tight end, lined up the big tight end, 250 pounds, standing up at fullback in the backfield, faking the uh, through the ball and ran around. Pick from behind. Watch, he's going to fake it to Carpenter, number 90. And then a little pitch that way, just pulling some things out. Cross. Pass is completed down at the 38-yard line to Matt Davison. Steps out of bounds. They'll mark him on the, give him the 37 on it. And it's another first down for the Cornhuskers. Scott Frost keep not doing a lot of things wrong in this ball game to this point. Looks like he's very relaxed also, smiling on the field as the other quarterback, Brock Hewitt, worries about his ankle. Vershawn Jackson, number 34, is in there now. They're changing people. They're Nebraska using a lot of people. Frost, down by Parrish on the sideline. Tony Parrish, otherwise he might have 
gone. Tonight at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN, 6.30 Central, Auburn and LSU in Death Valley West. Big battle in the SEC. Auburn led by their quarterback, Damian Craig, off to a big start. LSU's primary weapon, Kevin Falk, has a sore hamstring and may not play all that much. But the home crowd, if ever a home crowd, was an edge for one that LSU did. Frost is back. Scott Cruz, and he's got his man. Right on the numbers to Kevin Wiggins. And he's out of bounds at about the five. Well, Keith, when the running game is going, to seven Wiggins. he can do just about anything as far as play action pass. Mel Miller will save the touchdown. Chorak number 46, the defensive player of the year in the Pac-10 last year, not doing much of anything. And Scott Frost is right on the money. Kevin Wiggins is from Palmetto, Florida. Sound familiar? Yeah, that's where conversation came from. Give it to Amon Green. Green looks to me like he's hitting him over the, the inside spots with more authority, more power than he did last year. You know, this, this whole first half has been a physical game, Keith, and, the, and, and handing out most of that has been the Nebraska Cornhusk. They are just dominating the line of scrimmage and being more physical at the, at the point of attack. That's green. He's a Ryan. Touchdown. Cornhuskers. At 7.20 to go in the second quarter, Nebraska scores their third touchdown. This is going to be easy. Number 17, that's Towns, gets nicked off by Taylor. Aaron Taylor gets out and gets a piece of the linebacker who would have had to run to make the tackle. Chris Brown. 21 to nothing. The Nebraska Cornhuskers lead the Washington Huskies. Set up a 55-yard seven-play march, requiring only 217 for the touchdown. Aaron Taylor is going to get through and watch the linebackers. He's going to throw a block on Towns right there. Set, knocks him down. He's responsible. That's the backside linebacker. He'll never make it. Aaron Taylor's an All-American center, now playing guard. That kickoff by Brown beyond the field of play. And it'll come out to the 20 for the beleaguered Huskies to see whether or not they can finally generate some offense here in the first half. Rock Heward is on the sideline for the sprained ankle. Here's a look at Nebraska's option, Keith, what they've done with it. The fullback has carried it four times. He's averaging seven and a half yards every time. Quarterback has kept it only twice, but he's averaging 17 yards every time he keeps it. Big plays of the quarterback pitches. They've run the option 13 times already, and we're not even the halftime. Marcus Tuiasasopo, true freshman, is in at quarterback now. And the Huskers show him blitz. Six people up front. Hands it away to the running back, Sheehy, and he's taken down behind the line of scrimmage. The loss of about three yards on the play as Carlos Polk, number 13, came right up, stuck his head in the middle, and came right on through and got his man. Keith, we talked in the opening about Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator who has been in Nebraska for... 20 years who've been in a lot of big games like this and have really harassed and played mind games with with really good quarterbacks like Danny Werfel and uh, Cordell Stewart and whatever. You know, his matchup now with this freshman, Tuyas Sopo, is blitzing some, giving him different looks, getting him outside the pocket, which is good. Well, he's come up with another big play. Get him outside the pocket. You don't have to read anything that the defense is doing. You run away from the blitzes. When you get outside, it's a skill. There goes Hewitt to the clubhouse. That is not a pretty sight for Husky fans. 
Kelsey was the man chasing Tuiasa Sopo. He shook him off and completed the pass. A 45-yard gain on the play. First down, Washington at the Nebraska 38. 21 to nothing, Nebraska leading. A touchdown would mean a whole lot for Washington. Run it, he he. And he's inside the 35 to the 34. That's a four yard pickup. Duck right in behind Troops and Jason Peter 55 is waiting for him. Well, I go back to, to, to how physical this game has been on the Nebraska side, both in the lines, offensively and defensively. Their lines are just dominating the line of scrimmage. Call in the air and incomplete. It was intended for Andre de Saussure, and he had no chance. The Nebraska man, he had really had to work hard at keeping the interception away from uh, Jerome Peterson. Well, they threw at Peterson a lot last week. Uh, Dante Culpepper of the University of Central Florida threw a lot at number 11, Jerome Peterson. And, uh, that was a wounded goose there. That was uh, Nebraska faked the blitz. Tuiasa Sopo made the check, threw down the sideline, and uh, it was just a good fake blitz. Here they come. Better hurry. Get to the way. Got a block. And Keehee will have a first down for Washington at the Cornhusker 28 yard line. Jay, Jay Foreman. Foreman. Jay Foreman made a big play, getting yes, back he out. He was blitzing up the middle, and there was, it, if he didn't get out there, this play would have gone for a score because he got the tackle. He's a good player, fellow Foreman. From Eden Prairie, Minnesota, 235 pounds. You know who his daddy is? Chuck Foreman. Oh. Running back for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh -huh. Right in the middle of your screen, number 44. Foreman is nowhere to be found. Just never gives up. Look at the hustle. They don't have the first down. They're in too short. I called it first. It was not. Mark came back inside the 28. It's just in. Oh, this is a big play, Keith. This is huge. This is a Huge this emotional huge. play. Exactly. If he follows through. Nope. Hands it off. And that was a mistake. He didn't make it. Nope. He'd have been better off if he'd gone right up. Fruits his back. Yep. It was the fourth again, Keith, right up the center. He lost the yard on the play. Look at Foreman, he's right over the center. The center's gonna block over here somewhere. Watch Foreman go right up the middle. Penetration by the defensive line. I'll say it again, the offensive and defensive lines for Nebraska are dominating this game. And so here come the Cornhuskers from their own 29 yard line, first down. And it to the up back, it's Makavica. He's lost the 35 to the 37, and here's John. Welcome to New York, and it is early this season, but you have to talk national championships today. Well, number two, Penn State rolled earlier. Five of the other top six teams in difficult contests today will know a lot more when the day is done. We will have all the day's scores and highlights, including those big games, all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97. Right now, back to your game. Four and a half minutes to go in the first half in Seattle with Nebraska leading Washington 21 to nothing. This is Amon Green, and Green will move the chains for you. Put it up on the 44-yard line, close to it. And it's another Cornhusker first down. He 
mean, this is a big game. They're talking about big games, national implications, and all of that. You know, these two teams are ranked in the top seven in the nation, depending on which poll you look at. And, I, and, and a loss here wouldn't take either team out of it because of the opponent is a legitimate good team. But I think if you get blown out, uh, and this is happening, this is the way this is going, uh, this may drop you down pretty good. This is Buckhalter, the freshman, finally pulled down by Jerry Jensen. But he's got a big one down to the Washington 33-yard line, first down, Nebraska. D'Angelo Evans may be redshirted this year, couldn't get over torn stomach muscle, had to have surgery, and Buckhalter has stepped up to play so well that it may very well be that D'Angelo Evans will be redshirted. Could be. That's a good point. He was played. He hasn't been redshirted yet. Played as a true freshman. Very good running back. Scott Ross moves it away to Buckhalter. He tiptoes down the sideline for the 25-yard line. He finally got the chop. Matt Hoskinson has played quite a bit already today. He's been hobbled some, but is relieving right now Aaron Taylor, left guard. And we're at three and a half minutes to go, and Nebraska now wandering on down the field and beginning to threaten for another school. And, and, it, and, and they're doing it rather easily, too, Keith. Washington defense uh, this is pretty good defense coming in ranked number one against the run. Ball came loose for a second, but uh, Billy Legate, who relieves Makovica at fullback, recovered it. The strength against strength coming into the ball game was the Washington defense against the run. And Nebraska's offense rushing the football. Well, who's winning that battle? It's the Nebraska offense. the snap ball start offense five yards in the previous spot now John Saunders he's Ohio State against Arizona Andy Katzenmore the sophomore you talk about him every week a little shovel pass he steps in front and takes 20 yards the interception return for the touchdown Ohio State right now on the one yard line and leading 14 nothing Keith John. Nebraska right now is third and six and their camp at the Washington 28-yard line. Thank you. The Big 12 had a bit of a rocky start. Lost a little glitter, perhaps. But right now, Nebraska is has got a paint bucket full of good for the country. That ball is slapped away by number 35, Chris Kimball. Big guy coming on the rush, and that'll bring up a fourth down. Here comes Chris Brown, who, if he can make this field goal, it'll be his 28th at Nebraska, and it'll be a new career record. He'll pass Dale Klein. They'll mark it back around the 36. So it's man sized at 46 yards. He's got a hammer of the leg. Wind is not a factor. Oh, hey. oh, oh, oh. Ted Retzlaff stood up. He's going to do something different with it. And at number 17, linebacker Lester Towns ate him up. It looked to me like it was going to be a run. Yep. Didn't look like a throw. It looked like he was going to run some kind of an option off of it. Watch these two offensive linemen as they're going to go right in here. The man that gets in comes from the outside. 
two offensive linemen just blowing away that I don't know it's you gotta block first before you yeah. can run kicker got in the way too <laughs> husky ball with two minutes and 31 seconds to play in the first half you're up 21 to nothing I guess Oswald feels like you could go for something like that we also so far takes off one He is brought down by Brian Shaw, but he's picked up a first down and put the ball at the Nebraska 48-yard line. He has some quickness. He weighs 200 pounds. He is the deep back as they line up with a single back offense to Osasopo's pass. He is incomplete, intended for Jarzinka. Garzeka just simply couldn't reach it. Somebody from Washington, Keith, needs to make a play, get some momentum going, get some points on the board before they go in at halftime. Well, Payton has made a couple of big catches, but then all of a sudden he's gone from the offense. It's pretty hard to get anything really deep. Well, you, you, your trigger man for your big plays is gone. Brock Hewitt is gone. Tui Asasopo is just the opposite. He can make some plays, but you got to worry about him making big mistakes. This is the Payton. Got it. See, there's the guy that makes the big play yeah. for you, Jerome Payton. And the ball was just thrown out there, Keith. And Payton went and found it and took it away. The defender didn't find out where the ball was. It was Ralph Brown, number 22, just didn't know where the ball was. Nice play by Payton. Payton, four catches, 141 yards so far. Yeah, he just, the defender didn't know where it was. Brown didn't see it. Payton can make a play for you, though. It's first down Washington at the point Husker 12. He's got three successive 100-yard games in in receiving and to Yasa so far throws touchdown. Cleland, the tight end. So Cameron Cleland goes down the middle and makes a good catch. That ball went right through the hands of a defender and he still caught it. The extra point's important. He's good. And so it's 21 to 7 now, Nebraska, with a minute 38 to play in the first half. Here's Cleland over here. He's just going to come down and break to the middle of the field. Watch as Foreman's going to come over and jam him. They'll get inside of Foreman, and then there'll be a little window of opportunity to throw the ball. Watch how close this is. Right there. Defensive man came from the other side. This is a big play for Washington and for Tui Asasopo. Big confidence builder, Keith. his first touchdown pass is a collegian right there. He's a player. Randy Jones kicked the point. He will kick it off now for Washington. Shaw, Shevin Wiggins and Joe Walker. Joe Walker's a freshman for Nebraska, number 25. All the deep people. The shadows of the bright sun. As you look back toward the press box side of the field, you'll look right back into a very vividly bright sun. Difficult to see the ball. Bouncing it along the ground, and Nebraska's going to get very good field position out of it because Sheldon Jackson tied in, picks it up, and he knows what to do with it. So it'll be up on the 46-yard line at 133, and the Cornhuskers once again have very, very good field position. Yeah, I don't know about the wisdom of that. No, either. 
This week, Smith Barney takes us back some 20 years. Woody Hayes, Ohio State Buckeyes, leading the Oklahoma Sooners. Barry Switzer, 28-26. Uwe von Schaumann stepped up to center stage. 41-yard field goal to win it. It is long enough. It is good. With three seconds to play in the game. As von Schaumann hit it on. Was that call in that game? Anyway? I don't know. Some guy yelling and screaming. <laughs> Forty-six yard line, first down for Nebraska. The Washington kicking game has just it's been just, abominable all so far. There's a big defensive play on Amon Green. Chris Campbell, number 35. So Campbell's becoming more and more obvious as this game goes along. The shovel pass forward. Campbell had nothing. Said I have nothing of that. But, but the touchdown by the offense may have sparked this Husky defense. Second down and 12 for the Cornhuskers. Cross pass. Out of bounds. Incomplete. Penalty flag thrown by the side judge. Way back downfield. Kenny Cheatham going down the sideline. for illegal substitution is going to be picked up since the player participated in the previous play. The incomplete forward pass, 105 to play in the first half. Here's a look at what Scott has done in the first half. Six of nine of passing, but the rushing has been what has really hurt the Huskies. He's rushed for two touchdowns on two nice long runs. It is third and 12 and the crowd's in it. Scott Ross looking, getting some pressure. Campbell's after him. Passes away and no. So they chase him all the way across the field. Chris Campbell. And popped him one just as he let it go. I think that's what Scott's uh, complaining about. He got popped a little bit there at the end. Defensive line finally getting some penetration. Campbell 35 in particular. Shorak 46. That's the first time today it's been three and out for Nebraska. And in the front is Jesse Cush. His first one is 52 yards. There's a penalty flag. They knocked him down. They knocked Cush down. And there's another flag downfield as the Huskies return it, but everything comes back to where contact was made on the punter. Push. You got three flags on the field, Keith. And it all begins back up where the ball was kicked. I think it's Patrick Reddick who came in and got a piece of it. Yeah, that's a good call. Can't a man's got one leg up in the air and he's standing on one leg. You can't come in and take his other leg out. This is running into the kicker, maybe not roughing. The fourth and 12, so it may not be enough for a first down. Gordon Reese trying to sort it out. The foul for running in if the kicker is going to be picked up. Nebraska had an illegal block in the back on that play that left the kicker. There's also an illegal block in the back by the receiving team during the run back. So one wipes out another, but there's the third one to consider, and that'll go against the Huskies. That's a foul you don't see very often, Keith. Go ahead and rush it, run it, look to the right side. Just stop it right here. Watch this right here. Now, it's a new rule. If he pushes him in to him, that's why it's not a foul. 
You can't run into him on your own, but if you're pushed into him, then it's not a foul. You don't see that very often. Well, they're still uh, flipping the pages of the rule book. America's biggest road show gets even bigger next Saturday. Those are regional games. That will start the day for most of you. Check your local listings for the game in your area or from your cable operator. And then you'll have Notre Dame versus Michigan from Ann Arbor at 3.30 Eastern time. The whole country sees that one. And uh, following out on the West Coast at 4 o'clock Pacific time, the Western folks get the Trojans and the Bears, USC and California. It's all next Saturday. The penalty against the Huskies then for the push in the back will come down to the 11-yard line where they'll have the ball. Only 47 seconds remaining in the first half. And probably the, the better part of wisdom here for Washington is take care of the ball. Less than a minute to play and down 21 to 7. They've had their emotional lift. They got the touchdown in the closing minutes of the first half after looking like they were going to get blown away. Exactly. They, they got seven on the board and uh, Nebraska has three timeouts left. If they want to, they can take timeouts and make, force them to punt. Well, he took a knee to start the clock. It looked like Nebraska Jason Peter wanted to call a timeout and <laughs> the <laughs> teammates grabbed him to get out of here. Get Peter out of there. <laughs> so we got enough coaches on the sideline. We don't need one out there arguing our case. <laughs> so they seem content here to take the knee again and run out the clock and go to the clubhouse with Nebraska leading 21 to 7. And though it is still a 14-point lead for the Cornhuskers, they, in the last five minutes, have not been the dominating team they were for the first 25 minutes of the half. So we come to the break. Nebraska 21 and Washington 7. As we come back to Husky Stadium in Seattle, the score at halftime, 21 to 7. Nebraska is leading Washington, 74,023, the sixth largest crowd ever in this stadium. And it's been the Scott Frost show so far. Here are his numbers, and you'll see his two touchdowns. Well, he's run for 68 yards on five carries, Keith. He's got the two touchdowns, and he's controlled. He has made no mistakes, no fumbles, no interceptions, and he's run this thing. When you have an option offense, you got to know when to pitch it and when to keep it. And Frost did that very well in the first half. Second touchdown. Just a great athlete, Keith. That's not a quarterback. That's yeah. a running He's back. He's an athlete. Yep. Exactly. He's an athlete playing quarterback. The primary tormentors for uh, Brock Heward have been Jason Peter and Grant Whistler, 55 and 98. He has a sprained left ankle, and uh, this is how it happened. Grant Wistrom, who has been in there on him all day, fell on his left ankle, sprained it. Here's another look at it. What of his prognosis for the second half? Lynn Swan has that story. Well, Keith, it's not good. They x-rayed it. They said it's negative. They do not anticipate, however, that he'll come back in on the second half. They said he'll stay in the locker room, try and see if he can push off on it. Now, his backup, Marquez Tuiasasopo, Jim Lambright says we have to do what he does best, play to his strength. They're going to try <laughs> and run more on the edges and make sure uh, they play, take care of the middle of that offensive line. Uh, they, they have been able to run up the middle of the Nebraska defense, so they'll put the ball on the edges, Keith. There's uh, Hewitt coming out in a T-shirt. Twenty, as you were talking, Tuiasasopo was putting on his helmet with a great big yawn. <laughs> I don't think that kid's too upset, do you? I don't think so. <laughs> Here's the kickoff return by Joe Walker, one of Nebraska's freshmen, and he runs the ball out to the 25 and maybe the 26-yard line. And once again, the Cornhuskers have good field position. The Dean Witter halftime statistical story. To look at the first half numbers, look at 
204 yards rushing. That was the key coming in. Average on first down, 9.3 yards every time they snap a ball on first down for Nebraska. And so it is the 26 for this turn. Give it to Amon Green, and Green is hit just over the line of scrimmage, but caroms literally off the tackler up to close to the 30-yard line. Mac Tuiaia made the tackle. Ooh, I did it. You did good on that one, huh? I said it. I'll tell you a story about two of the Sopo. When Manu was playing at UCLA, Ara Farsigan was a commentator one night. He took three runs at Manu's name and called him Big Fella the rest <laughs> of his career. Good pitch. Gang tackle him. Lester Towns led the charge. So around the corner, they stop him cold, and here's John Saunders. Keith, after Peter Warwick fumbled a punt return, Neilon Green, who's forced into service, even with the bad toe, goes to Tony Horn. It covers 28 yards, and Clemson just roughing up Florida State right now as they have jumped out on top, 14-10. Keith. Third down and long three. They got him short. It's Lester Towns again. He's come out of the clubhouse firing. First drive of the third quarter is critical, Keith, both ways. University of Washington came out, stopped them defensively. That's the only, the, uh, the second time they stopped them with three and out. So on fourth and two, the Cornhuskers will have to punt. Jarzinka is deep for Washington. Kick is away by Courtney. Air catch by Joe Jarzinka. Washington will have the ball first down at their own 34-yard line, a 32-yard punt by Courtney. If the Washington offense minus Brock Heward shows the same fire that the defense did to start the second half, we might have a ball game yet. She he's in motion. Tui Asasopo quickly. Coleman, Coleman catches the ball but has to go down in order to make the catch at the 40-yard line. That's a pickup of six yards. He caught it right in front of Mike Brown. 
The problems for the uh, offense for Washington was Grant Westrom in the first half. There's no question he's an impact player. What he's done today is been double teamed about half of the plays. He's had five quarterback pressures. He knocked uh, his tackle was the play that knocked uh, Brock Hewitt out of the ball game. True freshman Marcus Tuiasa Sopo in there, the quarterback running around the corner, gets the first down. He was in a battle with Octavius McFarlane, and Tuiasa Sopo won it and gets a hand from Brock Hewitt. So look, uh, Wistrom being doubled. Dalen is 75. The tight end Cleland is there. So look at it. Little option running at Nebraska. That's going to be familiar with seeing the option. They face it every day in practice. Scott Linehan said they might go a man and a half on Wistrom. I think they've decided to go two full. That's Payton moving out to the top of your picture. Check it off. Amounts to a quarterback draw, and he picks up four yards on the carry. Jay Foreman, the middle linebacker, brought him down. He's a very agile fellow, Tuiasa Sopo. Here's Swanee. Swanee McBride is a defensive player from Nebraska. He said this freshman runs better than Brock, so he needs to worry about containment with him. So they'll try to keep the middle plugged up and look for U University of Washington to run draws. He says not too many inside games for his defensive linemen, keeping Wistrom on the outside, Keith. On second and six, here's a roll. No, they won't give it to him. It was intended for Cameron Cleland, who caught the touchdown pass in the closing minutes of the first half. Tuiasa Sopo had an opportunity to make a play there. Cleland was open, just didn't get him the ball. Jim Dave, the sports information director, just stopped by to let us know that the reason Hewitt is not in the game is it's his left ankle, and he, and being a left-handed quarterback, he can't plant and push off. You've got to have a good back ankle to push off. He says he just can't plant and push off on that left ankle. Third and six. Didn't quite get his uh, engine running, and uh, well, Jason just, Peter was there. Nobody opened downfield, Keith. He was ready to throw, three-step drop, and throw. But the good news is the young freshman didn't make any mistake that's going to hurt him right now. Well, right now, Sean O'Loughlin, the punter, needs a little shot of confidence. His last one was two yards. And it set up Nebraska's third touchdown. This is a little better. Just missed the coffin corner. Just missed down around the one yard line. It'll go 47 yards into the books. It'll be the rest of the ball. First down at their own 20, leading by 14. Well, the Washington defense was storming to start the second half, forcing Nebraska to punt. Let's see what they do here. Their second possession of the second half. It's Green. And he's caught right at the line of scrimmage by Isa, Jabon Isa, one of those young tackles in the middle. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. By Budweiser, Beachwood Age for a crisp, clean, classic taste. By the document company, Xerox. And by Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Second and seven, option to the boundary. First down, out of bounds. Knocked out of bounds, uh, up around, across the 40-yard line. Now, they'll get him on the 38-yard line. A moment with John. Arizona and Ohio State, the Buckeyes rolling. Third and 20 here. Drops back the pass to Stanley Jackson and then sees the opening. Quarterback draw 24 yards. Takes it in for the touchdown as Ohio State, as I mentioned, rolling over Arizona 28 to nothing. Florida State has just added a field goal as they creep within one of Clemson. Keith. 
And here it's first down, Nebraska leading Washington 21 to 7. Ball is up on the 38th. Option play working one more time. This is Green searching his way down the line and shoved out by Marcus Hairston, who followed him step for step. And there's no gain. The previous play, Keith, on that option when Green was going around in. Lambo right there, Jim Lambright <laughs> said, whoa, wait a minute. Let me get out of the way here. Things happen a little bit quicker than they used to. <laughs> Lambright has been here, what do you say, over 30 years? 34 years, I 34 think it is, years. 32 years. He played for Jim Owens back in the early 60s as a DB. He was tough. Played for four years, and he's been the head coach. This is his fifth year, and all the rest of them has been as an assistant coach. Amon Green now has 104 yards to go with his touchdown, and this ball is thrown high and wide. Number 14, Lance Brown, was over there. And so was Matt Davison. Nebraska's playing a lot of people. They brought 80 on the trip. One of those not here, fella that the world knows, is Fat Fox. Great dear old friend who's in Colorado with the grandchildren. Retired last year, Don Bryant. After 34 years at the University of Nebraska, the sports information director of the Soviet AD. Locked to mission. Got to be Third enjoying down. this one, doesn't he? Oh, boy. Third down. Crowd coming up for it. And the noise got in there, Keith. This is the, one of the few times in this ball game that the crowd has been a factor when Nebraska's been on offense. It's been a pretty quiet crowd. Down 21 to nothing early in the ball game. Before the snap, ball start. Offense, five yards to the previous spot. And that play was going to be an option, Keith. Tom Osborne calls all the plays. Sure, he just doesn't want to make a big mistake here and give uh, give Washington some good field position. Third and 15. Duck done. Cross pass. Man's wide open. Lance Brown. Broken coverage there. I mean, Brown was lonesome. And it's first down for the Cornhuskers. You got that right, Keith. Good throw. 35 yards on the play. Here's the receiver in the slot. He's going to go down and break to the outside. The two purple shirts to the top left are going to be covering the short outside. It's a nice, uh, nice read by Scott Frost and good execution to get him the ball. Ball is sitting at the 32 of Washington. See, that was a critical mistake defensively for the Huskies. Makovica picks up about three on that play. Scott Frost has not thrown an interception in his last 145 attempts. That's a record for Nebraska. Turner Gill held it at 125. And they're booing him? Yeah, that's Are you exactly kidding right. me? You want somebody that's going to take care of the ball. You don't fumble it on the option, and you don't throw it away on interception. Close to a first down with Green carrying. Chris Campbell, 35 over there. But not in time. It'll be now third and very short. At the conclusion of the game, Chevrolet, most valuable player from each team chosen. To date, Chevrolet, six and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of the United States Colleges and Universities. down just inside the Washington 21. Fifty nine is John Heskew playing center. He's out of Yukon, Oklahoma. That that whole line for Osborne has done a great job today. Keith Pollock, uh, Taylor, Heskew, Zadiska and Anderson. Okay, clinical. This is Frost looking for the end zone. Incomplete. Ball too high. 
What did you say when you were watching the Nebraska warm-up that the Cornhusker linemen were all dancers? Oh, I like the feet. All these uh, offensive linemen, especially the inside guys, Taylor, Heskew, and Zadiska, they're not big. They're uh, only 6'1", 6'2", and 6'2". Anderson, number 70 there, is, uh, is a little bit taller, but they all have good feet. They're all 300-pounders, but they can move, get around, pull, get around, get follow their blocks. Their feet keep moving. I like that. Here's another option. Kept by Frost, the quarterback. Turns it back inside on second and ten and pick up a couple of yards on the play. Nigel Burton there is small. He's only 5'9 and about 180. He's got a tattoo on his arm that says Mighty Mouse. He's the one that transferred from Pacific. Thought he'd have a better chance against Osborne's Cornhuskers here today with Washington than he did with Pacific. Ross is looking to run it. Get him for a loss. Number 67, Siku, uh, Suki Wig, blows in to make his second unassisted tackle of the ball game. So now the Nebraska kicking team will come out. Suki was kind of giving it to uh, Frost after he got in there. To watch him as he'll grab him right here, and he lays on him for a while. He's laying on him, and he's getting up slow and talking to him and <laughs> that brings back some memories <laughs> these guys fight all day when they finally get you they want to say something to you Chris Brown is trying for a new career record he missed it 41 yarder just slides outside and so the Huskies hold them with 636 to play in the third quarter The Home Depot Chalk Talk, some notes about Dr. Tom Osborne, and as you see what's reflected there on your screen, those 52 first-team All-Americans who played in 24 consecutive bowl appearances over the years. You might also note there have been 44 academic All-Americans among those Nebraska football players and 25 NCAA postgraduate scholarship. I'm impressed, Keith, when, when you, they, every year he's been there, they've won at least nine and never lost more than three. Pretty steady stuff. Dui Asasoko sets the Huskies now from the 24-yard line, handed inside to Shaw, and Maurice Shaw, the big back, will wedge it out for a couple of yards or so. They haven't used Payton a whole lot today, but when they have, it's been pretty spectacular, primarily because of his own athletic effort. Well, exactly, Keith. The ball has just been thrown up, and he's been one-on-one -on, -one on the corner, and he's went up and, and made the play. And it hasn't been intercepted, so you might say, why not do it more? I think that's a good idea. He's down at the bottom of the picture right now. And the ball's going his way, and he's right. lost his balance he might have scored this kid is a great receiver I mean he really makes play well, he came in as the number two receiver in the nation as far as yards per game he was averaging 172 yards coming in and I think he's going to have even more than that here today he was born in Cape Town. He moved to Canada, to Vancouver, grew up there, played soccer primarily, went to Acadia College in Nova Scotia, learned to play football, and came to Washington and said, hey, would you guys take a look at me? Here's my pictures. And they looked at it and said, holy cow, get him down here. Come on down. We were asking uh, Lambright yesterday that, you know, how did you find this kid? How did you recruit him? <laughs> he said, he came to us. All right. Five catches for 195 yards. That first running play a moment ago lost the yard. He's uh, working out there on Peterson, number 11. Peterson has some help inside. In the help will show up soon. There it is in Brown, number 21. But he just he made the play. That was a game-saving, I mean a touchdown-saving tackle right there. 
Second down, 11. Sheehy's in the backfield behind Kuliasa Sokol. He's got some room to run, and he can run. And he's down to the 17. Is that a good tackle by Mike Brown or what? I mean, Kuliasa Sokol's outside. He's got all the room in the world. And Brown brings him down with a, with a sure tackle. Just inside the 17, and they're looking at third down and about seven now. Mike Brown leads this team in tackles, Keith. This year, he's a strong safety. It's first and goal at the one. He he tackled at the two. For Nebraska is winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. Carlos Pope that made that tackle. As soon as that ball was snapped, there's somebody across the line. Washington can't get back to the line of scrimmage. An offensive line is just taking a beat. It's second down and goal, and now the ball is on the two. Yeah, they'll try something off tackle. Block everybody down and block, go at the smaller back, the, the defensive back, and the outside linebacker. Mike Reed. Got a ball game. This is critical. This is really critical. The first touchdown reception, the first reception period of the year for Reed. So it is now 21 to 14 as the injured quarterback congratulates the freshman. When Brock Hewitt was injured, Washington was down 21 to nothing. And the momentum was against them has come in and now they're only down by seven. will get the ball up around well, all day long the Washington kicking game but just been an abomination except for two decent punts by Olafi. That's a gutsy call by Jim Lambright. 
it wasn't he, a, he kicked it out of bounds. It's going to be refused. Yeah. The ball be placed where the ball went out of bounds. Pushed down the basket. Didn't give, didn't give his, his team a chance to, re no. to recover. No. He's going to hit it too far. He's trying to pooch this up in the air, and he just hits it too hard. So, Nebraska will get possession at the Washington 47. That's four mistakes that they made in the kicking game by their kickers. This is almost a ticket. Game to the 45. Joel McAvicka. I have a small documentary here about next Saturday. <laughs> it's not so small either. <laughs> Those are the three regional games. That will start at 12.30 Eastern time. So check your local listings for those. That Virginia-North Carolina game, pretty significant in the ACC. As Nebraska comes up to the line of scrimmage to snap the ball on second down and eight. Pitches outside to Armand Green, and it is Parrish running him down. Tony Parrish saved the day for the Huskies because Green had a huge amount of open space once he got past him. You're right, Keith. Parrish is the free safety. He's one of the top safeties in the country. Number seven. Watch as he shadows it. Runs all the way. There is nobody to block Parrish. Parrish is supposed to make that tackle, and he does on a very good back. And it's third and six. It could have been six points. Cross pitches it outside. And Green gets the first down, and that takes a little of the noise out of the stadium. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, you're right. The crowd has gotten back into the ball game the last time when they were cheering for the defense for Washington. The decibel rating, 106. If they can keep that up, it might be the difference, and maybe a good play being called by the Nebraska offense. Well, they made the one big play, but they couldn't make two. And Nebraska has the first down at the Washington 31. This is Makovic of the fullback. And when you start picking up six yards on first down, you've got a pretty good chance to win yourself a ball game. And that fullback, Keith, up the middle has been there all day. Well, you put eight men up on the defensive front, and you immediately give him a chance if he's big and strong, and this one is. Makovic has carried seven times for 47 yards. But they finally get him short on the first down, and here's John Saunders. Florida State mounting a comeback against Clemson, Keith. Thad Busby throws this one up for grabs. Peter Warwick just goes up and gets it. Takes it 48 yards for the touchdown. They get the two-point conversion. Florida State now in front by a touchdown, 21-14. Keith, back to you. Here it's third down and two. 21 to 14 ball game, Nebraska. Huskers trying to get another one. Washington has scored two unanswered touchdowns. And this is Green. And Amon Green is close to his first down. Marcus Hairston, the primary tackler, number 27. Jermaine Smith, number one in on the play. And they want to measure. It's that close. Time remaining, 41 seconds in the third quarter. Touchdown here by Nebraska. Might be fatal for the Huskers. Right there, Keith, you see the two quarterbacks, and the, the sophomore is just telling the, the true freshman you know, what they're doing defensively and what you need to do. that much. Inch. Field goal makes it a 10-point lead. Those field goal kickers missed a couple of days. Yep. Go for it. You might get a touchdown out of it. And I, it would, and I wouldn't be surprised, see, Keith, to see something on the corner where you might see a big play out of this, too, yep. because Washington's going to be up there to stop it on fourth down. This is where you can get a big play out of it.
Scott Frost jumps over the top and gets the first down at the 25-yard line. Again, it's an athlete playing quarterback. You got that right. Dad played for Nebraska in 1967 to 69, I believe it was. And his mother was, uh, was it, she was a national discus champion. Yeah, she was in the Olympics in Mexico City. I remember you were there. Huh? Close to four yards, Marcus Harrison making the tackle. Le Lester uh, Towns and uh, Marcus Harrison both have played very well in the third quarter. The clock is stopped, nine seconds remaining. Monday night at 9 Eastern, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, Pittsburgh and Jacksonville. What do you think of it, Chris? Has everybody been beaten once this year? I, <laughs> all I'm concerned about is everybody losing. I like, uh, well, I like Jacksonville's Jacksonville. too old. I, I, I like the Steelers. Do you? Yeah, I like the Steelers. Well, I Cordell uh, Stewart has been beaten once, but Jerome Bettis is still there. Oh. I think he's quite a weapon. No, I, 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 I like him. It's Hairston, the man down on the field for Washington. Marcus Hairston, the linebacker. And they're attending to him. And it is for him the timeout has been taken. That stopped the clock at nine seconds remaining. And he's up now. We'll have to leave the game. Washington team, though, is quite remarkable. All those youngsters that were caught up in that sanction business, they lost 20 scholarships, but that freshman class of 92 and 93, they hung together. They said, we'll stay, and they have. And the quarter now ends as the clock runs out. And ABC Sports presentation of college football will be back after this message and the word from our ABC station. A blue sky in Seattle, Washington, all over the northwest for the next few days. They've had their fair share of rain over the last week. Nebraska's football as we start the fourth quarter, second down and six. And they work in the middle. And a big play there as the carry goes all the way down to the 11 yard line. It's that big old fullback, Joel Macavica. Big strong legs just keep pumping and pumping and carrying people, and it's right down at the front porch. Take a look over here. Just watch this offensive line as they're plowing out. Fired off, double teaming, and then sliding off. A little cross block. Hoskinson, number 62. An offensive line with good feet. Probably the best group of feet in the country, Keith, on the offensive line. Well, the quarterback draw here with Scott Frost going to the five or close to it. That's close to a five-yard pickup. And so it'll be second down. There's a penalty flag now. They're just quick, Keith. There's a flag. There's a flag. There's a camp Arizona against Nebraska. My goodness. Came after the play. Here's the call. Dead ball. Personal foul. Offense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Oh, the that's a down. big, big penalty for uh, for Nebraska. That's not too clever. That's a 15-yard penalty back to the 21. Here's Swanee. We'll, we'll, we'll go to the land right after this play. They come quick. Oh, that's a Cross gives it to Macabeca. Back down to the five he goes. And here's Swanee. Well, Keith, number 27, the inside linebacker, Marcus Harrison, who limped off the field, has a strained medial collateral ligament in his right knee. They take an ice bag on it. 
Uh, they say he is doubtful. He probably is not going to go into the ball game, but Keith, he won't give up his headgear. <laughs> Third down at the five yard line now. They can get a first down just inside, or just outside the goal line. It'll be very close. So it's third from the five. Cross option, pitches, three, tackle, fourth down coming up from the three, and it is Lester Pounds making another big play here in the second half for Washington. Nice play by Towns, Keith. He fought off the block. Towns, one of the leading tacklers in this ballgame for the Huskies. Got help from Campbell, and Campbell's played a, a very strong second half as well. Here's the field goal kicker, Chris Brown. He's out of South Lake, Texas. He's 0 for 1 today. This one is good. And so at 12.45 to play in the ball game, Chris Brown has his 29th field goal at Nebraska, a new record. Twenty-four to fourteen, twelve forty-five to play in the game. A key field goal for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Back Chris Brown. Brown kicks this one through the end zone. zone, beyond the field of play. So that twenty-yard field goal hangs up there like the top of a growing mountain right now for the Washington Huskies. Brock Heward, as you see, is out with a sprained ankle, looking over the game story. Nebraska answered, "Who could run?" They ran for nearly 300 yards in the first three quarters. Scott Frost has had a big, big day. Mm, I'm almost choking to death here. <coughs> Washington had was minus five. The opponents were minus five on the ground against Washington's defense coming into this game. The were, that was against two whack uh, schools, though. The two, two the ball. Didn't, didn't try to run. Much. This is Sheehy. Look out. Look out! He's got one man to beat. Can't do it. There's a penalty flag back inside the 30-yard line, and I think this one may come back. This one may come back. Yep. Holding against Washington. There were two Huskies with their knee down on the ground way back up field where the foul occurred. And one of them knew it. Maybe both of them. All right, here it is. Let's go ahead and run it a little bit. On the left side, stop it right here. Now watch this tackle right here in his left arm. Watch his left arm at the end. He just reach it out right here. Watch it right there. Now the official over here, stop it here. Right there, he's going to go ahead and he's going to throw his flag. That's Cruz the center. I mean, just something that insignificant pulls that whole play back. I mean, I don't think he even needed to do anything more with that arm to try and hook him because she he was by him anyway. It'll be first and 12. Eight yard gain, 10 yard penalty. And this is uh, Maurice Schultz, the 32. So that's back to just about the original line of scrimmage where it'll be second down at about 10. Jason Peter, Keith, uh, Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, said he, in my 35 years of coaching, he is the best defensive line overall that I've ever coached. That's high praise. Boy, I'll say. Charlie looked pretty pleased with things yesterday. Didn't yeah, he? He, was, he was in a good mood. He had a hole in his shirt, but he was happy. <laughs> He's got eight new starters on that defense, but he says it's kind of fun. You know, it's kind of uh, it's different. Uyasa Soko. Trying to outrun trouble. Can't do it. Run him out of bounds. Instead of dumping it, he tried to outrun the world, and there's no way you can do it. And here's John. Time now for the Burger King play of the day for the second straight week. It involves Tavian Banks, another terrific outing. 
This one early on in the game, 82 yards he carries this one. Right now, 19 carries for 131 yards. That's 648 yards on the season. He has four touchdowns this afternoon. That gives him 10 rushing touchdowns on the year, 11 overall. Iowa is rolling. That's your Burger King play of the day. Keith. I do believe the Hawkeyes have a pretty good football. I think they're laying in the bushes there, uh -huh. Hoss. I do. Third and 14. Passes away. Got a chance with it. Incomplete. That ought to get a flag. Doesn't. Never looked at the ball. Had no idea where it was. Brandon Hansen ran into Fred Coleman. That's a close call, Keith. You, you can, there is no face guarding in college football. You can face guard. The question is, did he run into him before the ball got there? And he did not. The ball was underthrown. You can face guard in college football. It's a good call. I thought he'd run into it. Once again, there's not much of a kick. In big games, any crack that you have will, will come up. And the special teams in the kicking game are coming up to get Jim Lambert. That's a 27-yard punt. So here is Nebraska now camped on the Washington 43 yard line after a 27 yard punt and uh, Washington special teams Keith early on they missed a field goal and then they had punts of two and 27 yards and then they failed on an onside kick and because of that onside kick and that bad punt Nebraska gets the ball inside the 50. Now they can afford to grind away because you've got the, the clock running. At 11:10 to play in the game, An ABC Sports presentation of college football being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Dean Witter. There are many ways to measure success. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. By Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline and Domino's Pizza, who brings you their newest crust sensation, Pesto Crust. Second and seven. Green is out. This is Bumpover. He's down at the 40 yard line. So Green looked like he left the game holding his shoulder. And Buck Halter came hustling in for Nebraska. Pretty good day. 129 yards on 29 carries. While they look at his shoulder, Buck Hawker stays in. It is third down and seven. All at the 40. Cross back, get pressure, pass thrown, incomplete. 
Could have been picked off yeah. by Town. Yeah, that's right. And it was a bad uh, choice, a bad decision. One of the few bad decisions by Scott today. And so Cush will come in for the Huskers. That could have been a big play if the defense could have turned that into something going the other way, Keith. Something that the Huskies needed. I think the defense for Washington, if they are to be a factor at the outcome, will have to make a play. I think you're right. Brett Coleman waits for it. But it's a Howard turn. It'll go into the end zone. So at 9.45 to begin the game, a 40-yard punt comes back to the 20 for the Huskers. Trying to hold off Clemson. This is a punt. Watch Peter Warwick. Goes to his right, and then the speed. He's got the punter to beat, and it looks like he'll be caught as he's held up. But no, a block there, and then a little interference. He takes this one to the end zone. 90 yards on the punt return for a touchdown. Florida State now leading 28-17. Keith. Florida State finding the way, huh? So 20-yard line now, first down for Washington. 24 to 14 here in Seattle. Rui Asisopo goes down the middle with it, and he's got Coleman at midfield. And the pressure on the quarterback, Keith, has not been as fierce since Tuyasa Sopo, I think they're more containing, keep him in the pocket. Double team, Wistrom gets there eventually. Nice throw. And first down at midfield. Real time, 10 point ball game. I think of goes in motion. Ball is handed inside to Sheehy. And Wistrom is right there to take him down. Tomorrow at 3 Eastern, 2 Central and Pacific, the Comfort Classic Senior Golf final round out of the Brickyard Crossing. Larry Nelson leading by one stroke. Hale Irwin has said that he's going to play four more tournaments. And try to set a new record, not only for wins, but for money. But it's Larry Nelson, a newcomer, who's been honing his tools for some time to hit the senior tour. And Washington now has call time as Tuiasa Sopo goes to the sidelines, looking down at second down and eight, eight minutes and 37 seconds to play in the ball game. All right, we go to the last eight and a half minutes of this football game. It should be second down and nine for Washington. Nebraska leads 24 to 14. Ruyasa Sopo's pass is incomplete. Batted away by number 46, Brian Shaw, a linebacker who had dropped off into that open zone. Yeah, he was uh, head his man. If Shaw doesn't get in the way of that one, Tuyasa Sopo is 11 of 18, 255 yards and a couple of touchdowns. But Payton is the man they need to get the ball to. Yeah, Coleman was over there on that play and Payton is on the near side or the bottom of your picture. Now they're going to reverse that and Payton's going to go to the top of your picture. Payton's got five for 195 yards. Coleman goes over there with him. There's time. And he jumps the ball off. Tried to dump it to Sheehy. And Sheehy had uh, had some help. He had coach in front of him. And he had some open field in front of him. But he he couldn't get the ball. Because as he was trying to, Tuyas Sopo was clubbing. Well, Wilkes is the man right here. They're going to do a little cross. Number 99. Uh, he had plenty of time to throw this ball, Keith. The true freshman, you just can't expect that much time. Wilkes finally shakes loose and gets in there. Well, it had to go sooner. Hold off it again. Hold their breath. And it's a low knuckleball. It's going to roll around down around the five. The Huskers kill it down there. 
So it'll be Nebraska first down at its own five yard line and with the roll that's a 44 yarder. And you've got 817 left to play. Tuesday the first new Drew Carey show of the season starts with a special night followed by a classic home improvement season premiere of home improvement and then Hiller and Diller will premiere at 10 9 central there will be a special all new episode of the practice That's all Tuesday night on ABC all right from the five what the Husky defense can do for their cause. It is Correll Buckholder. He's a 210-pound freshman from Collins, Mississippi. Nebraska recruits everywhere. Here's Lynn Swan. <laughs> hey, Kate, with eight minutes to go on this game, Nebraska's offense will not have the services of Amon Green. He has a bruised left shoulder, a little stinger. His arm went numb, and the medical staff said he will not come back into the ball game. Pete. Right. Well, then it's Buckholder, the freshman, who has to step in. They do have a 10-point cushion. Penalty flag. Stops the play. Double zero on the clock. play clock before the snap ball start offense half the distance to go from the previous spot to second down so it's second down Tom Osborne calling the plays he's a little sneaky his passing game is very efficient Keith for several years he's led the big eight or the big 12 now in touchdown passes very bright very smart coach as far as calling plays Coming up. Inside Makovica. There's the big fullback. When you crowd him, you open the door for a guy like that, and he's burned them all day. Well, this offensive line team continues to do the job. We talked about the fullback early in the ball game. Watch as the offensive line is going to block down, block down, and the guard will come, and it'll be a split right up the center. At Zadiska, Zadiska 64-70 is Anderson. Just a bunch of cross blocking, and the reason they're so good at it is they got such good feet and they're quick. They flush cross and bring him down right about the line of scrimmage. It was Chris Campbell. That was a 44-yard run, run by McEvick a moment ago. He has 10 carries now at 116 yards on the day. That's his biggest career total for a game. These two teams played back in 91 and 92. And we both, the staffs were the same. We asked both staffs, and they said the fullback will be key in this ball game. The last time they played each other was here at Husky Stadium when Washington won 29-14. This is Scott Cross. And Parrish tracks him down. And makes the tackle at the Washington 35. Now time becomes very precious. 6.07, 6.05 to play. Scott Cross, the... Uh, I think he was a little upset last week, Keith, when they started booing him. I saw some uh, little upset, some interviews that he did, and uh, mad in a hornet. Yeah, he, he was, and uh, and I, I think he under has to understand uh, who was who was booing. I, it wasn't the loyal Nebraska fan that was doing that. Here goes Macavick again, and he's picked up another first down down to the Washington 23-yard line. I think that's a record for what? Is it carries? Or number of yards for McAvicka? Maybe both. He's a great story, Keith. His brother was here. His brother was a walk-on. Fullback. He learned from his brother. Now he takes over. Another walk-on. He's a 3.8 grade point average in pre-med. 
So you make your fullback smart, well, know who to block. All of the fullbacks, uh, two of them played eight-man football, and the other one played six-man. Six-man, that's right. Buckhofer stopped that time with a, a suddenness right at the line of scrimmage. 24-14, Nebraska. Washington was a slight favorite coming into the game, I guess, if you're concerned with those kinds of things. You leave that line, huh? I'm not so sure one can predict what 18, 19, 20-year-olds <laughs> are going to do until they've done it. Especially this early in the season. Right. Uh, Washington had played some, some good teams. I mean, they played BYU, and they beat San Diego State. Nebraska had a little bit a little bit easier schedule. Coming in. This is Frost. He's out of bounds just inside the 15-yard line, just short of the first down. Jermaine Smith made the tackle. We may have a we may have a tailback over 100 yards, a fullback over 100 yards, and a quarterback that's getting pretty close. Well, I think you have it. Well, I just do. Green with 129. He's the tailback. McAvick is 128. Fullback. Scott Frost has 106 yards on 15 carries. That's the state. And that's again a team that was leading the nation in run defense coming into the ball game. There has never been a football team have three people run for 100 yards in a game against Washington, according to the record book, according to Kelly Hayes, who sought it out. Man is an eternal, persistent hunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, Keith, you remember when we talked to Randy Hart, the defensive coordinator for the Washington Huskies, he said one of the things that concerned them most about Nebraska was their patience. He said, you know, the big fullback coming up the middle, if they're patient, it's going to be a problem for them. With three people over 100 yards, I'd say Osborne has been most patient. Yep. The other thing, too, he said, Lenny, was he was impressed with the staff of Nebraska, the continuity. You know, they have all these assistants, and hardly ever does any of the assistants leave. They have the continuity year after year after year. They've been running these plays for a long time, and it's just a tribute to Tom Osborne that the staff and these guys stay there. Frank Solich, Charlie McBride. It is second down and goal from the seventh. Here's a look at the staff, George Darlington, the defensive backfield coach. Milt Tenniper has done a great job with the offensive line down through the years. Frank Solich. From the seven. Pass to the corner. Touchdown. Vershawn Jackson, penalty flag. Hold it. Let's not celebrate yet. It's against Nebraska. I think it's a... I don't know. I thought it was going to be a celebration foul. Coming back. Scott, he's not too happy about it. Holding against Nebraska. So the door slammer has been uh, removed. And at 317, the Huskies still have some life. Touchdown, bring the ball back to the 19 yard line. 18 yard line. Quarterback draw, and that's uh, Chorik. The... Chorik's been kind of quiet today, hasn't done a yep. lot. Right. Yep. Suki Wiggs made the tackle. <laughs> Nobody blocks you. I guess you ought to get in there and do something. Of course, that was a quarterback draw. He shouldn't have been running out that way, but there was penetration inside. Ball is now back near the 21, where it's third down. But time, precious time, two quarters play in the game. And Washington 
No, it's Nebraska spending a timeout to stop the clock and sort things out. They've got third and long coming up. Twenty-four to fourteen. The, the vital statistics are right there in front of you. And it's third and twenty-one. They're not going to go for the three-pointer. Throw it inside. Ball is caught by Cheatham. He's been very quiet today. The tackle is made by Torek, and uh, that'll bring up the fourth down play. It'll be fourth and long. And time stopped again. Now they may uh, have a reconsideration of the kicking tee here and see what they want to do about it. Now let's take a quick look at some upcoming program you'll see here on ABC. remembering this possession for Nebraska was started back at their own five. And they just sort of munched their way along downfield and here they are now looking to uh, add to their lead if Chris Brown can pop through. The young man had a good game. Grant Wistrom. An academic All-American last year. And an athletic All-American. Also, good player. So now let's see if Brown can nail it. And if he does, he is pretty well close the door. He's right down the middle of the road. So at 225, it becomes a 13-point lead for Nebraska at 27 to 14. Well, they both came in undefeated, and one of them uh, looks like Washington's going to have a loss after the game. And you know, they lost their quarterback and they, you know we talked about where they were thin and they were thin at quarterback and they lost Brock Hewitt the two freshmen had to come in he played well you know is Washington out of the national championship race it's early in the season uh, how far are they going to drop down if you're going to lose lose early the positives for them are they lost to Nebraska dominant team and they lost their quarterback. I think it's not inconceivable that they can make it back up and challenge for the championship. Team. They're both, not going to drop. They're not going to drop below eight or nine. Both these teams uh, have an open week next week before they start their conference play. Uh, 
Washington has Arizona State here. The Sun Devils have not surrendered their championship yet. The schedule for Washington for the Big Ten, I mean for the Pac-10 and the, and the race uh, to the Rose Bowl is very favorable. They play all their tough games here at home. And they don't play Stanford. Correct. Uh, Nebraska, on the other hand, has an open date. And then they play Kansas State. One of the tougher nuts in the Big 12. So that's the next step for these two. A week of rest, preparation, and then for the conference. Brown's kick is short for five. This is Jarzinka. And goes back to about the 27-yard line. Here's a look at college football today. Florida is beating Tennessee. Penn State already won. Washington losing in Tennessee. They'll both drop down some. Florida State and Nebraska are winning. Carolina won. Louisiana State plays tonight. That'll be a big game. I guess Iowa's not going to get up into that top ten until they play one of those big boys and do something, huh? They go to Ohio State October the 4th. That'll tell you something. That'll tell you something. From the 28th. Hard day for Jimmy. Bathon, the man in motion. Rui Asasopo better hurry. Mike Rucker comes blowing in to get the sack. And here's one. Keith, Nebraska's played a good football game, but at this time of the year, they're going to start looking at their weaknesses and trying to make sure they shore them up. And one of the areas of weakness I think Nebraska has to look at is that of wide receiver. They haven't had a wide receiver maybe since Abdul Muhammad in 1994, who came in and could make the big play for him in the middle of the field to, to, to really get a big chunk of yardage. Maybe not a great receiver since Irving Fryer. And it's one of the difficulties for Nebraska to get in the top receiver because people all over the country know they love to run the football. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If I'm a, if I'm a receiver, believes I can make the big catch, and I want to see it get a lot of opportunities, Nebraska's not a bad place because they can put the ball up and you can get some big numbers in Lincoln, Keith. Yes, you can. I'll tell you one other thing about these uh, Nebraska wide receivers normally. Is they're good perimeter blockers. Oh. And they're in your face all the time. You don't get on the field unless you can block. Because that option may be coming right behind you. So after the sack, it is second down and uh, about 15 for Washington. 2.03 to play in the ball game. 27 to 14. This ball thrown down the middle is completed to the tight end, Cameron Cleland. He's a big guy. He is. 275. And I like the way he went down at 275, Keith, to make that catch. It was low, and he went down and caught it. I, there aren't too many guys that big can do that. They stop the clock to measure. We invite you to stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. At 154 to play in the game. And it's a first down for the Husky. Jason Chorick on the sideline. Two better days. Get ready to go. Brock Hewitt. Our crowd today is 74,023, which is the sixth largest crowd ever here at Husky Stadium. He tuned in late. Brock Hewitt went out in the first uh, quarter, I believe it was, with a sprained ankle. Nothing serious, but was not able to play the rest of the ball game. Triasa Sopo tries to throw the ball to Sheehy, and Sheehy knocks it on out of bounds. Because that was close to being a lateral. Somebody had, a, had him by the shirt sleeve. I guess it was Wistrom. He couldn't get away. Look at the schedule for the Huskies. USC, Oregon, Washington State, and Arizona State all at home, all their Washington, tough games. Washington State's over here for the Apple Cup at the end of the season. Here's Tui Asasoko in trouble again. Better throw it. See, those are things when film study tomorrow or the next day that he'll learn as a true freshman. 
Maybe in high school last year he was able to get away from these guys or make big plays by doing that stuff, but these guys are a little bit quicker than high school, Keith, and uh, you'll learn from this. The time remaining now is 1.28, and I think the issue of uh, this particular match has been resolved. You know, one thing, I, whenever I see Tom Osborne, I, you know, guys come in and follow legends like Bob Devaney and another... And you know, they don't do so well, but this is a guy, Osborne, who just went in there and just made it better. Just took oh. off. Pass is incomplete. And it'll be fourth down. And here comes the gamble of the day for Washington. It's been like this all day long. The kicking game just simply hasn't been very good. Tom uh, took this program to a higher level and he took over for Bob Devaney. It was very successful at that point, but. Well, Tom had been with Devaney as the coordinator and quarterback coach for a good long time yes. before he took over. So yes, he had. He knew where all the crannies were. <laughs> <laughs> we lost Bob Devaney this spring, of course. There. Now there's a punt that they needed some time back. But it again takes uh, Nebraska bounce. So, like it's been said before that elliptical spheroid has no sense. The Chevrolet most valuable players of today's ball game Scott Frost. 16 uh, carries for 104 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. He's 8 of 15 88 yards in passing. For Washington, Payton, spelled P-A-T-H-O-N. Remember that. He's going to be around for a while. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and assist those in financial need. A Chevy tradition for more than a quarter of a century. And I think Jerome Payton... He's one of the most exciting receivers I've seen around the country. Right now, it's a question of time, and uh, Nebraska, would, they got all the points they need. They'll just run out the point. Bottom line, Keith, Nebraska came to Washington and took this game in the trenches. They were more physical in the first half than they won the game. They scored the 21 points, got up 21, knocked Hewitt out of the ball game, but their offensive and defensive lines set the tone for this game. And it was a relatively quiet sort of a play that injured you. Uh, the ball was gone and Wistrom was falling down with him and he just fell across his hand. Mm -hmm. so Scott Frost takes a knee and we'll get the clock rolling again. Here's a look at what Nebraska did. Frost the quarterback at 100 yards. Green, the running back, the tailback, 129. Three guys over 100 yards. Makovica was really the key. The fullback doesn't normally get that much rushing yardage uh, in a ball game from the option. And as the clock ticks away, your final score, Nebraska 27, Washington 14. Coming up next, Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. Scores and highlights from across the country. We hope you enjoyed the game today.